Microphone's working today properly. Uh, we can go ahead and get started. What's going on, party people? This is Chuck, aka Basic Land Shark, here for another installment in our Monday morning magic series, whatever we're calling it, uh, Modern Endeavors. Uh, bringing to the table uh, Traverse Death Shadow uh, for this stream. Um, the deck list is pretty much based on something I spotted over the weekend on Matt Nass's Twitter feed. Uh, so we made a few changes after talking to friends um, about the list. Uh, since then, cut the metamorphose in favor of cards like uh, Cling to Dust and a couple copies of Unearth and Lightning Bolt. Um, I also added a copy of Gore Clan Rampager back into the list because uh, I noticed that that was absent. He was running something like Plague Engineer um, as a main deck card. Um, and no Dismember, which is kind of... Uh, Kind of shocking considering that Dismember does so much for this strategy. Uh, the Lightning Bolt is in here to be able to uh, have the upside of using it as removal, but also bolt ourselves if we need to. Um, and uh, that grows Death Shadow. We have the full four copies of Fatal Push, uh, plus one Bolt, uh, plus one Seal of Fire uh, to grow Tarmogoyf and get that back with Luris of the Dream Den. Um, other than that, the list is pretty much the same. I'm rocking the same exact mana base as well, uh, so I'm not sure if that needed to be changed as well. Uh, we have a main deck Assassin's Trophy, that's a little different. Uh, so I guess the list is uh, different. Uh, sideboard is uh, comprised of a lot of the same cards. I like a lot of the uh, Traverse targets uh, that I saw in Matt Nass's sideboard, um, but I also um, wanted to play these Surgical Extractions in the deck. Uh, because I think they're going to be, I think they're going to prove to be very good with our uh, discard spells. Uh, so there's nothing like taking um, taking an amulet of vigor or a primeval titan on turn one with a thought seize, and then following that up with a surgical extraction um, either that same turn or on a future turn, and then their deck really can't win. Um, there's a whole bunch of decks that would fold to that um, that kind of strategy. Uh, we have two copies of Veil of Summer for the uh, the discard centric matchups. So I'll bring these in versus Attrition or um, against uh, a lot of the blue decks in the format. It's pretty good. We learned the last time it does not counter Cryptic Command, so it won't make that mistake again. Um, Yixilid Jailer, uh, this is our uh, graveyard hate spell of choice. Um, no, I'm not in that tournament. Um, unfortunately, my win rate was not. Um, anywhere near close enough for the modern side of things so unfortunately no mana trader stuff and then i'm a legacy know nothing like i don't really dabble in that format uh too often like as far as uh watching it sure but as far as playing it i don't have any experience none whatsoever um we have uh Kalidus also to hate on uh, uh creatures coming back from the graveyard so this is a little bit slow. Uh, it's the only four drop in the deck outside of Gore Clan, which we want to be casting for the Blood Rush instead of the uh, the full CMC. Uh, but I do think that it's a, a nice traverse target, especially if we have a lot of removal spells in hand, uh, because just like in regular Jund, uh, Kalidus can actually close out the game pretty fast. And it has lifelink, which is not nothing. Uh, it can help us get back into the game uh, if we fall too low. Um, Another Traverse target in Shriek Maw. Uh, this card uh, is not here for the 3-2, but more or less uh, we can put it in our hand for one mana, and then uh, for one and a black we can evoke. Uh, if we do it, Sacrifice, which puts a creature in the graveyard, but we can destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature. Uh, so that's pretty much like a uh, Traverse target for when we need to remove a creature from the battlefield. Uh, Ten Street Hooligan does the same thing, but for artifacts, uh, it's a little bit. Uh, um, it's the same CMC, but if we cast it for a green, we get to destroy an artifact. So it kind of has like a kicker um, effect. Uh, if we just want to shut down all artifacts on the board, uh, Collector Oof is going to be uh, the target that we pick. Uh, Renin Six. Uh, so there's still a fair amount of matchups where Renin Six is kind of a house. Um, Thinking Infect, uh, which we should already be pretty well against Infect. We should already do pretty well against all their X ones, but uh, Renin Six really hurt strategies like that quite a bit. Um, I might actually bring this in versus um, Green Red Ponza because uh, 
it can be somewhat easier to cast. Um, and it also gets lands back from the graveyard after they pillage and stone rain and all that stuff. Um, I noticed that uh, Matt Nass's list was running Ghost Quarter in the sideboard, and maybe that's to to pair with the run and six. So I don't exactly know um, uh, why, but uh, I cut it in favor of Surgical Extraction. I think that card uh, plus uh, Thoughtseize is going to be good enough. Uh, so Plague Engineer, this was a main deck card for uh, Matt Nass. This is a sideboard card for us. It's a traverse target uh, where a lot of our um, uh, creatures are in the sideboard. We'll bring them in in the matchups where they're good. Uh, Plague Engineer, really, really good at wiping the board uh, versus a bunch of X1s. If you name the right creature type, um, you can really punish your opponent early as well. Um, Cosmic Chris, thanks for diving into the Shark Tank. I appreciate that. Um, hope you're having a good day. Uh, we do have a second copy of Assassin's Trophy in the sideboard uh, to go along with our one in the main deck. Uh, just too versatile not to run. Uh, sort of like a catch-all, if you will. Um, and then Collective Brutality. Uh, this is another uh, very um, very nice card to have access to. Um, his list was running three copies. Um, I'm running two copies. Hopefully we don't miss the extra life gain because um, we're a Death Shadow deck. I think we can get away with a little bit less life gain in the deck. Um, and we have uh, Cling to Dust in the main, which, uh, which he didn't have anywhere in his list. So uh, we're going to be trying this out as a two of. Um, and uh, Collective Brutality is for the, uh, the burn matchups uh, that make our life total uh, pretty, uh, pretty fast disappear. Uh, plus we have the Duress mode. Uh, we can use it as a removal spell if we must. Um, sort of when you get all three modes um, active is when this card is at its best. And we are kind of a delirium deck, so putting cards in the graveyard, not the biggest downside. Um, it can be actually an upside, so a lot of good reasons to have this card in the deck. Um, and that's sort of like the uh, synopsis of the deck here. We do have four Nurturing Peatlands, a new addition from Modern Horizons, um, giving us the ability to uh, pay a life at the end step if we need to. Um, there's still a fair amount of decks that don't really chip shot us, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, sometimes decks want to um, uh, just sit back and make us deal the damage to ourselves if they know what they're doing. So Nurturing Peatland can kind of help us there, and it draws a card. So having a pay one, sacrifice, draw a card in your mana base is really, really good. Uh, Antog, howdy, what's up? Uh, happy Monday to you. Hope you're having a good one. Um, we're getting ready to jump into the league here. Um, so we've got two Blood Crypts. Uh, we have uh, one Overgrown Tomb, one Stomping Grounds, a Basic Swamp, a Basic Forest, uh, four Verdants, uh, four Bloodstained Mire, and the four Peatlands. Uh, we're on the play, so that's actually um, a big plus. Uh, this is a bunch of lands here. This is a bunch of lands here. Uh, I think I'll mull this hand since we don't have a threat. This is a little better. And one card goes to the bottom. I think we want to keep both the discard spells. Let's put Gorklan Rampager to the bottom. Go ahead and cycle Street Wraith here. We drew a Traverse. That's actually pretty good. And we'll lead off with a Blood Crypt. Go ahead and Thought Seize the opponent. Okay. So this is uh, Wilderness Reclamation. Um, All these cards are pretty powerful in their own regard. I'm tempted to take the Wilderness Wreck right now. And then maybe we'll take Remand next turn. 
This deck is pretty scary. They have some of the best factor fictions I think I've ever seen. Every card is just a powerhouse. Okay, so they drew an island and they played it for turn. Forgot to mention the unearth. Uh, so this is a way to insulate us from uh, discard spells mainly. So this is going to be an important take here. Uh, I guess we take them off remand. We have three card types. It might be a little bit of a struggle. Um, to find that other card type. So I think we're just passing the turn. Although we could use this to go and get land. <laughs> Almost done. Yeah, um, it's still in my wheelhouse. I'm excited to be presenting this strategy. I think it's, uh, I think it's fun, interesting, grindy. I like playing attrition based strategies like this. Um, and th the opponent's on a doozy here. Uh, so we took their remand away. Um, I feel like casting Traverse here is kind of a waste, but um, let's do it anyways. Uh, we'll get a forest. No, wait, we gotta lose life. Can't play it like it's Jun. I'll get an overgrown tomb. I'll shock it in. Go ahead and traverse. Get a land. There goes Thought Scour. Okay, if we just would have saved uh, the Traverse, it would have been much better. Guess we'll take a look at their top card. Growth Spiral. Rut Row. Uh, let's go ahead and cycle. And actually, I think we have more things to do with green than we do with red. So we're going to cycle off of the Blood Crypt here. Street Wraith. Yep. Still trying to find us a shadow. Oh boy. Still trying to find Shadow here. So we've gotten ourselves all the way down to two. Uh, this is pretty scary. I think cycling all those street rates may have been a mistake. Punished for using um, Traverse too soon. There's Death Shadow. Will it resolve? Uro is fine.
Double Death Shadow. Sign me up for that, please. Now, the only thing that sucks is they have Cryptic Command up so they can tap our team. Really don't have any good way around that card. It was once said that you can't lose the game with a cryptic command in hand. I'm beginning to think that's very true. Uh, do we even bother with Lightning Bolt here? Probably not. What's it gonna be? Oh, they're playing the text list version. Tap and draw. Scalding Tarn, Mystic Sanctuary, here we go. Okay. Okay, so they're going for um, a row. So I think it's actually a good idea to bolt them here. So I can only swing with one. Actually, if I swing with both... Then they have to block. Attack with both. What's up, Slayer Fall? So now they kind of have to spend their mana on Uro or another Cryptic Command. Growth Spiral.
Yeah, in this case, I think um, we still have to play around some stuff. Okay, run in six. This should yield a concession. All right. So going to game two. Um, I think I want the surgicals. We don't have a ton of graveyard hate. Uh, Yixilid Jailer as well is a nice traverse target for this deck. And then I need to read Uro for a second. So if we simply have Kalidas in the deck, if Uro would be sacrificed, um, this actually works versus that. So they're not really a discard deck per se. Let's go ahead and cut our unearth. That's more or less for the uh, the Thoughtseize decks in the format. Uh, Lightning Bolt. I kind of don't think I want that card here. Um, same with Seal of Fire. But Seal of Fire is slightly better than just a, a random Dismember. This seems pretty good. We might actually want Veil of Summer as well. So let's bring in the two Veil of Summers. Hey Zichi, how are you? I don't really know what to cut here. Guess we cut Luris and Trophy. Okay, this hand actually leaves a lot to be desired. We have the forest for the traverse. I'm doing all right. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know if this was a good keep. So we might actually see Remand here. Um, for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and play Tarmogoyf.
Uh, the result would be the same if we were playing Thoughtseize. Uh... Thanks, Affinity. Uh, it was sorely overdue. Okay, I could really use a fetch land. Just gonna play Tarmogoyf, pass turn. All right, there's a third land, like that. And we'll use Tarmogoyf as bait for a counterspell. Um, check out the deck list. I made a lot of changes, some of them based on um, um, our discussion. And then tooling around in the, um, the Traverse uh, Shadow Discord. All right, what's worse for us here? Ashiok? Everything that we need is already in hand. Uh, but I just think this card is too big of a problem. Well, this is actually the first match, uh, so I think it's too soon to comment. <laughs> Not playing with Stubborn Denial feels a little bit strange. I like that. It's like a safety blanket. Uh, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, pull up a chair and help us win. Field of Ruin for my peatland. That's gonna that's gonna hurt. Uh, Big Zo Hole. Uh, thanks for diving into the Shark Tank. Appreciate that. I uh, hope you're having a good day. So I'm sad. They get a basic and I don't. Oh really? Um, yeah, I guess it is that time of year. Are you somewhere in the? Um, are you somewhere um, in the south? Um, So I guess we're just going for um, Thoughtseize here, take their best card.
I think the best card to take here, probably this remand away from them. Oh, you're from the Midwest? That uh, sounds about right. Uh, this is the time of year uh, for that, right? Well, fingers crossed uh, that it misses you guys. So I don't really think that we have a lot of ways to get through these uh, zombie tokens. I don't think I brought in Plague Engineer. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and concede. This game got out of hand. We need to beat them faster than they can get Field of the Dead online to have a chance. So with that said, maybe I do kind of want a Plague Engineer. And with no Lurus, uh, Seal of Fire seems a little bad. Shriek Maul can actually kill Uro. Yeah, I think what we have there was a classic example of a questionable keep. I could bring this in as a uh, way to kill um, Uro. So I think I might want this in the deck. Question is, what are we cutting for it? I'm unfamiliar with Shield Breaker. I did hear it come up in uh, in discussion though. Just don't know what it does. Okay, it's an adventure, an adventurer. I think I'll actually cut one traverse. All right, I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, let's lead off with uh, Verdant. Go ahead and grab an Overgrown Tomb. Thought sees.
All right, uh, what do we take here? Uh, it can't be Growth Spiral, right? I think Wilderness Wreck. I think the most powerful card here is Uro, um, but that can come right back from the graveyard. Uh, what do you all think we should take here? Uh, this card is very scary, uh, but still uh, quite far off. Take Wreck. Yeah, Factor Fiction is very scary in this deck. JP, are you saying yes to take Wilderness Reclamation? Because uh, there's... All right. So we'll take that away. Not another thought sees. Uh, w Parker, thanks for diving into the shark tank. Hope you're having a good day. I appreciate that. Reclamation because they can sanctuary back uh, factor fiction. Okay, that's actually a really good point there. I'm glad that you mentioned. Ooh, Veil of Summer is actually pretty nice. Uh, didn't they show us a hand with Lightning Bolt previously? So I can preemptively cast Veil of Summer here and then go for Death Shadow. How does that sound? Go to 11 to cast Veil and then play Death Shadow. Or we could just play Death Shadow and then Veil in response to a removal spell. Let's do that. The only thing that sucks though is if they have a counter. Well, if they have a counter spell, um, it's probably Remand. I don't know what that means. 
Okay, Death Shadow first. Okay. This card never should have been printed. Uh, I don't think they can gust a shadow. It's got to be red or green. From the crypt. Nom 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 nom. Hey, buddy. You know what we do with those? Are you ready? Um, nom, 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 Thank you for the 15. Shark bites. Uh, from the crypt, though. You have to learn Legacy to play, uh, Legacy in the Mana Traders events, don't you? If so, did you pick a deck? So the last two cards that we're aware of are Factor Fiction and Aether Gust. I'm going to tap this for mana. Guess we play another shadow here. And then is it worth it to go for Gore Clan here? They can't respond. I think it actually might be. What's up, Piters? How's it going? Hold Gore Clan until you have lethal. Ah, too late now. Uh, three card types in the graveyard. They're tapped pretty low. Um, you can't lose life and draw a card. Hmm, how to best navigate this turn? And with four minutes on the clock. Um, Is 
if we all right i got a plan i got a plan Pay one, draw a card. Okay. Back with both shadows, he'll block one, push, and then traverse. The problem is when he untaps. Oh crap, why am I in attack step right now? Damn it, we punted. Turn off auto yields. Oh, I just skipped my entire freaking turn. I'm kind of pissed. Uh, something happened with uh, auto yields. And that was a really bad spot to have it happen in because I had a lot of plans. Somehow I ended up in my turn with auto yields on. So we might actually lose because of that. Just moto stuff. Yeah, but if they actually get lightning bolt. No kidding. It is Shark Week this week.
Okay, cryptic command. Um, so I can actually veil right now. And I think I have to. They have the Aether Gust in hand. Uh, Minorbit, what's up? I think I want the Veil on top in case things go wrong. Uh, Brosini, what's going on? Whew, that was too close. That was way too close. On the play, let's see what kind of hand we get. Oh, we have a one lander. I guess I'll keep Mishra's Bobble can hopefully cantrip us into another land. I'm gonna bobble myself. Thought sees on top. That will help. Thanks. I think that's one of the only, uh, what is it? Franker Z, Franker face Z emotes that I have. That one was from the Crips idea. Temple of Enlightenment. So this is an ad nauseum deck. Lotus Bloom on Suspend. All right, 100% Adnos. Yeah. You're right. When you're right, you're right. Another Peatland. All right, it's enduring ideal. This is a strategy I'm unfamiliar with. I have to imagine that periphery nodes just uh, wins games. But Suppression Field on turn two also uh, going to make it so that we can't fetch, really. Opponent leaning on enchantments is actually not a good sign for us. Guess we'll take the cheaper one. So I'm guessing their strategy just is ramp until they cast Enduring Ideal. Right? <laughs> I mean, not right, but right? <laughs> Uh, 
So how do we make sure we don't get blown out by this? We pay the two like we have to do for Leon and Arbiter. Uh, big Zoho? No, it's uh, it's like Enduring Ideal dot deck. I'm actually fine paying the life for this because it's kind of what we wanted to do anyways. And I think we need a Blood Crypt here. Really don't know what to expect. Like, I don't know how their win con is, or what their win con is. I think I'm just gonna bolt them to be mana efficient. Play Luris here. Uh, we can get back Bobble, we just can't use Bobble. We'd have to pay two, which is why. So Lotus Bloom coming off Suspend. If they simply play land this turn, they can now cast uh, Enduring Ideal. Which one, Suppression Field or Enduring Ideal? They're a Hall of Heliod's Generosity deck. Now that makes sense. So I can't imagine this is good for us. Dovescape. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, counter that spell. And then I'm assuming they probably have things that say, uh, like, Ghostly Prison, I have to pay so much to attack and stuff. Trophy would be a good draw here. Tarmogoyf also works. So you might be trying out Storm uh, to play in the Mana Traders thing this month, Legacy Storm. Per se. Uh, you're definitely going to want to play something that you're somewhat familiar with. Any games is better than no games in a format as deep as Legacy. Uh, me, I know I would temper my expectations going into an unknown format.
Let me make sure it's... Alright, I'm gonna try and fatal push my own um, Luris for the token. Hey, man of the work, what's up? We actually do have some draws that can get us out of this, but... Form of the Dragon deals 5 damage to any target. Creatures without flying can't attack you. Yeah, this feels like um feels like we're locked out. If we had drawn a land there, uh we could activate Mitra's bobble and then traverse Wait, Traverse is going to get countered. Beginning of each end, end step, your life total becomes five. All right, yeah, we're pretty much dead. And I can't even pay. So that's checkmate right there. Wasted a lot of time on the clock trying to figure that out. So we definitely want both Assassin's Trophies. See, the thing was that with Form of the Dragon like and uh, Phyrexian Unlife, we're just trying to draw to Assassin's Trophy just to have a remote chance to win.
they're kind of a combo deck. I'm going to try out Surgical here. Uh, Renin 6. Pretty sure, um, is a Planeswalker an activated ability? So I guess we can cut some of our Mishra's Bobble Luris Package. Uh, let's get Fatal Push out of here. That card probably stinks. Cling to dust as well. So I think we just want all creatures. All creatures in direct damage. Uh, team or Battle Rage likely to suck. And then hopefully they don't have like a transformational sideboard kind of deal. Where now that we're not running creature removal, they just like bring in all these creatures and stuff. I'm going to keep this hand... So Leyline of Sanctity, obviously not the greatest thing for us. Here we'll grab Overgrown Tomb. And if we traverse for a land here, that gets us one land closer to Gorkland. Yeah, I just don't know how to play against this strategy. I think we're playing to draw um, Assassin's Trophy. If we don't draw a trophy, then we just don't have a chance, really. Okay. No periphery nodes, please. At the beginning of your upkeep, destroy the creature with the least power. It can't be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for the least power, you choose them. And then if there are no creatures in play, sacrifice it. They always have it.
So I'm only going for Gore Clan right here because we're not guaranteed to have a creature in play after this turn. I know you said earlier, save it until it's lethal, but... So our cards really don't line up very well versus a strategy like this, and I think that's the point of the whole entire deck. Yep, Ghostly Prison. This match is... This is a lost cause now. I think each one of these is a must answer. Uh, Jorge CM, thanks for diving into the shark tank. Appreciate that. I hope you're having a good day. Not willing to give up just yet. I think there's like a small possibility that we can get Death Shadow uh, down. Uh, we only have Assassin's Trophy as a main deck and then one that we brought in from the sideboard. Go ahead and play Shadow here. At least we're playing a version of Shadow that has answers to enchantments because Grixis can't beat it. Fuck, I should have gone for Surgical last turn. Pardon my French. Um, should have done it while we had the chance. Now we're going to lose Death Shadow. But this feels so bad. And it's only a three of. Play the bobble.
Yeah, um, Leyline of Sanctity on the board doesn't uh, let us cast Thoughts East. Oh, yeah, you're right. You are right. When you're right, you're right. Uh, so I think I just punted. Had I done that, I think we would have hit them with the Teamer Battle Rage. Or no, I wouldn't have been able to, because I still would have had to pay two. So we couldn't have battle raged. I can't be the mythic from uh, <laughs> Magic Origins. All right, winning the die roll three straight times. Always a plus. Any guesses on the matchup before the opponent plays their first lane? Uh, another one lander. This one's so good though. I'm keeping this. They have Luris as a companion. We'll play Pete land. Since we don't have a fetch land, we'll bobble the opponent. Cling to dust. So this might be like a prowess strategy. I think it's a prowess strategy. We'll find out here in a second. They're playing a bunch of low CMC stuff, so we'll go ahead and inquisition first. Black red prowess. All right, this is going to be tough. Mm, all these cards are like must answer. Thought Seize is going to make everything harder though. Swift Spear, I mean, yeah, I'm fine with taking a little bit of, like, uh, damage here and there, as long as it's not, like, uh, just an early onslaught. Because they're actually helping us get to a low enough life total to turn on Shadow. I think we'll take Abbott here. Like, it's okay if they clock us, as long as they don't win. <laughs> so, a second Swiss Spear off the top is a little scary here. Uh, why didn't I traverse for a basic? Uh, I think I needed to cast Thought Seize that turn. I could be wrong though, Sinar. Um, maybe I should have.
Uh, when you're right, you're right. So I was wrong. I should have um, should have traversed for basic swamp and then thought seize. That would be the better play. So we're just destined to draw traverse. This one feels like a loss. Yeah, I don't really know what the key to the matchup is. This one feels pretty over. We might just scoop, go on to the next game. Uh, this lava dart is lethal by itself. I mean, we can fetch. While wow, this is on the stack. Get a stomping grounds. Play it. And now all they have to do is sacrifice Blood Crypt uh, to flashback Lava Dart. Or not even. Okay, uh, Plague Engineer, I think, deserves a slot here. Hmm. Hey, what's up, evil hunk?
Kalidas, you think? Uh, what did you decide on, Evil Hunk? Yeah, Brutality is definitely for this matchup. Thanks, I don't want to forget that one. I think we can cut Dismember. Veils for push. I don't want to bring in Veils for one card. I mean, I know they have Thoughtseize and everything, too. Um, Plague Engineer is bad. All right. Uh, Green Tron. Very cool. Take out Street Wraith. Cutting a couple of Street Wraiths in favor of Veil of Summer, probably not the worst. Plague Naming Humans is good, actually. All right. That's kind of where my train of thought was originally. And I'll cut one Traverse. They probably have like Nile Spell Bombs and all this stuff. Dismember better than Traverse. Uh, well, as a collective, we're all over the place. This hand is very keepable. <laughs> so I kind of think the key to this matchup is going to be uh, survive the early barrage and not take too much damage off of our own stuff So they have a very uh, creature heavy draw. I'm actually going to play. Hmm. So we can actually super punish them. I think I'm going to take Coligan's command here. We want them to play the Abbots. We're on the same page, theaters. We're trying to get some value off this uh, Plague Engineer. Yeah, I'm kind of a Jund main who also plays uh, Grixis Death Shadow a fair amount. I have both decks in paper and here. So I'm kind of like a jack of all trades, but a master of none.
No attacks. So the opponent's on to us. They're on to our strategy. Uh, this opponent knows what's up. Alright, Tarmogoyf can hold down the fort. At least for a little while. Uh, the thing about Plague Engineer is that it's probably better on the battlefield. But if we just play Swamp here, we can Tarmogoyf and hold up Fatal Push. Yeah, it is Spike U. Also, what's going on, Spike U? I missed your first comment. <laughs> yeah, Luris is in the companion zone. Sounds like a good time, good way to work. There's the first Abbot. They opted to play Bloodstained Mire over the mountain. All right, no attacks here. Guess we're still going to continue to hold up Fatal Push. Ooh, Collective Brutality. So their last remaining cards are Swamp and Abbot. And then if they have an unknown card, it's probably a one mana spell that they can just cast in response. Kind of think we should just... We should just collect the Brutality, the Soul Scar Mage. Yeah. Since they're playing around the card already, I'm just going to cast it. Now they have to play their hand.
Uh, that's a good, good um, point, Sonor. And we'll name human. Um, combat. Fatal push for Plague Engineer. There's Abbott. Nile Spellbomb. Sure. Still no attacks here. Just gonna attempt to kill the board right now. So they need to play Alluris or two threats to have a chance. Here's Alluris, maybe not. Are they escaping cling to dust here? They are.
All right, Tarmogoyf back to a 4-5. I don't want to waste this uh, Collector Brutality. Uh, shit. I miss Lethal. I should have gone for Collector Brutality. That was a punt. Yep. Well, they didn't add a second permanent to the battlefield, so they just lost as a result. But we could have had lethal last turn. All right, so if they're playing a bunch of Nile spell bombs, uh, Traverse is really kind of not great. Uh, someone suggested Dismember better than Traverse. And then what else do we want? Anything like Shriek Maw? Shriek Maw is only really good when you have Traverse in the deck. It might be just good enough here it can't kill Luris, but it can kill everything else. We'll just bring it in as a two mana answer uh, to one of their one drops. Okay, one lander with a whole bunch of gas. I'm going to keep this. We're going to be um, keeping risky hands today, it looks like. Nice. All right, what do we want to take here? I think we probably just take Fatal Push away from them. Because that card kills Death Shadow. See, that makes no sense. They were attacking last game, but... Or they're attacking this game, but they didn't attack last game. I guess they feel like they have a shot. What card do we discard here? Oh, 
I almost want to discard the Assassin's Trophy. Uh, because of how slow that it is. Ooh, Tarmogoyf's actually a really good draw there. They do have a lightning bolt for it. Oh, I could have discarded Death Shadow and then picked it back up again with Unearth. Yeah. That might be the line for this turn if they play discard. The nice thing about having Unearth in the deck is that it makes their removal uh, weaker or their uh, discard weaker. No, I didn't take Spellbomb. I took Fatal Push from their hand. Uh, essentially because I took removal. Uh, try refreshing, JP. Refresh your browser. All right, fetch land. So we can fetch shock, uh, putting us down to 10. Death Shadow still won't survive the lightning bolt. But then we can unearth and get it back. I think I'm just going to pass a turn here. Seal of fire.
think we're just gonna push that now. So Tarmogoyf just rendered pretty useless. I think we need a blood crypt here. Then we'll play Shadow. And we'll see if we can uh, make them go for a seal of fire before damage. Didn't work. Okay, bolt. Um, that I can respond to. Wait, Death Shadow is already a 5-5? Five five. All right, peatland's actually not the worst. Would love to see what's in their hand. <laughs> okay, first things first. Let's attack. Cling the dust. Okay, we got them down to a three. Unearth, grab Tarmogoyf again. Eh. 
And now we have to uh, hope they find land, go for Crocs out of desperation. We can discard Collective Brutality. There's Croxa. There's the win. Very close game. I'll keep this hand. Yeah, I'm unsure what's better on Earth or Cling to Dust. Um, I'm thinking some split. Maybe one and one, two and one. Some mix of those cards. Ad nauseum. We'll cycle a street wraith to draw traverse. Another non fetch land. So I guess we just play Blood Crypt here. Pass the turn holding up Cling to Dust and Lightning Bolt. Okay, another redundant copy of Traverse. So this turn we could have land instant. No, we could only have one of those two things. So I think we'll just play Peatland, pass turn. Oh, absolutely. It's not that uncommon, affinity-friendly artifacts. So it looks like we're trying to draw our one of Assassin's Trophy. It's gonna cycle the nurturing peatland. All right, this is far too many lands for an 18 land deck. I think I have to bolt myself just to turn on Death Shadow. Uh, it's not going to come up as often in this build because we have 18 lands, uh, but with so many cantrips, 
you can get the five lands and then also opponents playing path to exile um assassin's trophy can get you there Uh, so Thassa's Oracle here tells me that they're going to Spoils of the Vault. Nope. Serum Visions. Okay, I was thinking they could Thassa's Oracle uh, Spoils of the Vault and win on the spot with Phyrexian Unlife. Actually, that may be what's happening now. Isn't Spoils an instant? Uh, maybe they can't do that. So never mind me. Uh, we'll bobble the opponent. Traverse is online now. Uh, their next card is a Serum Visions. Going on, Hydra, Bo Hydra Brews. Um... So I guess we want both green sources here. Death Shadow up to a 4-4. Four, four. Traverse here. And we either want another shadow. Or a street wraith to grow the existing shadow or Gore Clan. Problem being Gore Clan is not lethal. So I think we just want second shadow. Deploy that. It's a Gore Clan Rampager. I think we'll play this off of the Overgrown Tomb, represent Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt. So this is the turn that they usually go off. All right, they just have the combo. So against combo, I'll bring in Surgicals. I think I'll bring in Trophy here. Uh, Collective Brutality is okay. Collector Roof actually does a thing here. 10 Street Hooligan does a thing here. The only thing about Collective Brutality is that it sucks if they Leyline us. Hey, 
that blue. What's up? O R U is pretty bad. I don't know what O R U is. You mean collector oof? Cobru is pretty bad. All right, well, we don't want that card then. Uh, they probably just bring in like graveyard hate. So I think we'll cut Unearth. Uh, Lightning Bolt is kind of bad. Seal of Fire is kind of bad. Clean the Dust also not for this matchup. Take out Lurus. If we have Veil of Summer in the deck, um, then that would mean that they can't counter our stuff with Pact of Negation. So I think I'm actually going to try this out. I'm going to cut Gore Clan and a Teamer Battle Rage. All right, uh, this is just so risky. I can't keep this hand. If this was a Thought Seize, absolutely, but I can't keep this. This is better. Um, it's ad nauseum, JP. I think I'll put back the teamer battle rage. Uh, we'll cycle the Street Wraith. We got a Bloodstained Mire, which is actually half decent. Why not put back Push? Uh, because we need an instant way to remove, um, what's its face? The Merfolk guy. Thassa's Oracle. We need an instant speed answer to that. And we also need to have Vela Summer up the same turn that we use it. Creature, instant, sorcery, land. All right, I'm actually not going to traverse this turn. Yes, they do play Thassa's Oracle now. It's like their main win condition. They pick up their whole entire deck and then they play Thassa's Oracle with a Pact of Negation. 
um, to make sure that you can't remove it. So we need Veil of Summer at the same time. It's a long shot. Okay, another Street Wraith. We'll cycle that away. Go ahead and fetch here for Blood Crypt. Sleight of hand, their opponent digging, digging for the perfect piece. Still digging, so dig, 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 dig. Another land. I think we can actually cash this in. There we go. Uh, we'll bobble the opponent. We have Simeon's Spirit Guide on top. So we literally just need to draw one of our um, seven discard spells. Can't forget they have Spirit Guide. There's Serum Visions. So between Sleight of Hand and Serum Visions, opponents over there just sculpting away. Creating a masterpiece of a hand. Potentially one that insulates them from a one for one removal. Uh, there's currently no instant in the graveyard. Ooh, 10 Street Hooligan. So this is more like a Traverse target. Hmm. So, we trophy their Dark Slick Shores, they'll probably go and grab a Swamp, <laughs> but then, yeah, th I think I'm just going to play uh, 10 Street Hooligan as is.
spoils of the vault. Okay, now there's an instant in their graveyard. Another Temple of Enlightenment. Thought Seize. Well, uh, we're probably losing traverse so what we might want to do is go ahead and surgical the spoils of the vault away because that card can kill us Okay, uh, so they have Angel's Grace and Ad Nauseum in hand. That is a combo that kills us. Two Spirit Guides and a Plains. Aristocrat, thanks for diving into the Shark Tank. I uh, appreciate that. Hope you're having a good day. Then I forgot to hit the one from the graveyard. We could still top deck a shadow here. I guess we'll thin the deck. Uh, let's grab... Let's grab a Blood Crypt. Ooh, Street Wraith. We're pretty close to being able to hard cast the Street Wraith. One, two, three, four. City of Brass, Angel's Grace, and they have Spirit Guide, which I did forget. So I can't do anything uh, with Angel's Grace on the uh, battlefield. All right, with that on the stack, I think I'll cycle Street Wraith here. Trying to draw a Veil of Summer. If we draw a Veil of Summer, we have a chance. We did not. So this allows them to pick up their whole entire deck. Uh, because we want to, um, we want to Assassin's Trophy their Thassa's Oracle. And then have Veil of Summer to protect against the Pact of Negation. Because I don't think they're on Lightning Storm. I think they're just on 
Thass is Oracle plus uh, Pact of Negation to protect it from removal. This time we'll actually let them do the combo. Last time I scooped like as soon as I saw it. So they have zero cards in their library. They have 42 cards in hand. And if we go up the line here, Okay, there's Pentad Prism. Another Pentad Prism. I believe so. Let's read it. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at target blah 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 blah. So it is entering the battlefield. Uh, we're going to lose... We're going to lose our second removal spell. So I guess if we go for Assassin's Trophy, that might be smart. Just trophy this. They're taking it anyways. Yep, they got us. Hopefully I didn't use all my luck on the die roll. This hand looks really good. <laughs> uh, thanks, man, it work. Yeah, that was our only hope. Uh, this hand is only missing Street Wraith. Go ahead and bobble myself. I have a Mistress Bobble on top. Let's grab Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, Overgrown Tomb. Inquisition, hopefully into a Tarmogoyf. Ooh, nice, we got Ponza. Um, it's gotta be Blood Moon here, right? We could take Sprawl, but Blood Moon just hurts so bad. I'm taking that. I don't think we can function with a bunch of mountains. I think I just want to swamp here. I 
Yeah, that plan only works for um, when they don't have land destruction. They're playing main deck pillage and they're playing main deck stone rains more than likely. Okay, Assassin's Trophy. We should probably blow up the uh, the land with Utopia Sprawl on it. We should probably do that, right? Go ahead and play Bloodstain Mire. Blow up the forest. I mean, they'll go get a mountain. They're not going to be cut off of red completely. Okay, so I definitely should have played the forest. Move the combat. So I feel like I need to save this fetch in case they go for a land destruction spell. Utopia Sprawl. Attacking here? Okay. Here I think we'll grab a stomping grounds because we need no wait blood crypt excuse me blood crypt it is I pack CS go thanks for diving into the shark tank I appreciate that I hope you're having a good day uh, redeeming posture don't know why that's not showing up in twitch chat but uh, I see it on my end Sit up straight for you. Better posture, better plays. Mm. Uh, we're fetching to get a red source. And then I'm gonna tutor up a tra with Traverse, a Death Shadow. Hopefully we draw a Shockland. Nope. Mistress Bobble. So we've actually got Teamer Battle Rage here. We could Battle Rage plus Gore Clan if we had a second red. If we had a second red. Uh, let's see what's on top of their library. A 
We have a run in six coming up. No worries. Uh, have yourself a great evening. Thanks for being here. I don't think I have anything in the deck that just kills him. So if we traverse here, uh, we can grab, maybe grab Luris. Death Shadow probably it. Gore Clan pushes three damage. Maybe it is just You're not going to Glory Bringer. You we don't know what's in his hand. We don't know what's in their uh, hand right now. Um, I think it's actually Gore Clan this turn, then Team or Battle Rage next turn. Or no, maybe it's Team or Battle Rage this turn, which would have meant it was smarter to save the Gore Clan Rampager. If we Team or Battle Rage this turn, it plays around the off chance that they can um, Glorybringer plus Bolt uh, the Tarmogoyf, then we just play the Gore Clan now as a 4-4. And hope that's good enough. Um, unearth is pretty helpful. All right. So that hand looked pretty decisive. Uh, I didn't have the second red source to do it. And I was a little bit concerned about them having access to relic, uh, which could conceivably be a main deck card. So Assassin's Trophy looked uh, pretty good there, didn't it? Um, Renin 6 also does a thing here. So we'll bring this in. Uh, Plague Engineer for their one drops. Collective Brutality also kind of nice. Slowing down their early stuff, taking their uh, pillage, their stone rains, and all. Uh, Shriek Maw seems like a good removal spell to have versus them as well. I don't know if Ten Street Hooligan does enough here. So I don't think we want to grind versus them. I think we'll cut Luris. It's just bad versus Bolt. Um, I think we'll cut Unearth. I don't think we're going to have a graveyard really too much. Uh, we'll cut Cling to Dust. Their main answers for our strategy is going to be um, Relic of Progenitus and Scavenging Ooze, if I had to guess. So we need cards that are good versus those cards. Have to cut three cards. I think I'll cut I 
I think I'll cut two Traverse. And then maybe one Mishra's Bobble, seeing as how we don't have Lurus in the deck anymore. I definitely don't think this is the kind of strategy where we want to be bringing in Surgical Extraction for any reason, so... Alright, this hand... Very good. Play Overgrown Tomb. Inquisition over Thoughtseize. This might be Veil of Summer. Looks like Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer. Get no Surd. Pass turn. So correct I need to correct myself. Their main um way to uh, beat us is Veil of Summer, Scavenging Goose, Relic of Progenitus. If we can dodge those cards, we should have a good chance. Alright, uh now that we have Lightning Bolt in hand. I think it's smart to go after the the forest here. They're going to have access to three mana either way. We could Fatal Push the Arbor Elf. Uh, they have two. We could also Utopia Sprawl the forest. Hmm. Uh, we can fatal push the Arbor Elf and then Assassin's Trophy, whatever they play. Problem is, if they play a Blood Moon effect, we're just pretty dead. I think I'm just gonna push the Arbor Elf. We really don't have that many good targets uh, for Fatal Push, and we have a lot of good targets for Assassin's Trophy. Utopia Sprawl. And that's their turn, all right. Shit. Let me see their hand. Glorybringer. All right, taking that. Hopefully they don't top deck something else. Opponent probably thinks I just drew that. Uh, 
Okay, they top deck a Bloodbraid Elf. And their last card is Mountain. We take three off the Blood Braid Elf. Could really do with a red source here. Could really use that. Bloodstained Mire. All right. Obviously, uh, we're not taking a mountain from their hand with Thought Seize. This deals us two damage to target it. That might be worth it to not take four every turn. <clears> hmm. <throat> Do we play engineer here? I think we play Engineer here and name Elf. Active! Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the host! How was your stream? Playing League today or Magic today? Usually it's one or the other. Hopefully you're having a good day. Thank you so much, Shark Salute. Uh, please do yourselves a favor and go follow active uh, gamer underscore fitness here on Twitch. I think we want Blood Crypt. We'll play Plague Engineer, we'll name Elf. Hits two of their important creature types. Any idea what deck you're gonna wanna play? Um, I'm like the wrong person to ask. I have no, uh, no knowledge of Legacy outside of like the old Star City Games Sunday tournaments from uh, several years ago. That was my exposure to the format, and I loved it while while it was a thing. So that Wooded Foothills, is that the same one, or was that their top deck? No, I guess not. Okay, Mishra's Bobble, not really doing much for us here, but we'll go ahead and play it. Delver or Oko? Isn't that the same deck? Like, Grixis Delver plays Oko? Gamer Delver plays Oko? So they're like one and the same. We'll Bobble the opponent. They have a stomping grounds on top. Uh, it might be time to thought seize. Although something tells me that they just have two lands. Hmm. Guess we're passing. If we're not going to thought seize.
Okay, that we can actually lightning bolt. At least we don't have to pay life to target it. I felt like their hand was land. All right, we'll do it off the swamp. This is pretty scary. I think their hand is lands. Nope, they have a Utopia Sprawl. That was not worth the trade. Really need something like Tarmogoyf. Death Shadow. Oh, you know, just a casual Chandra. Well, I guess we have to kill that. Now this game's over. Unless we draw something crazy, like Shadow or Unearth. What might that be? Can't even shop to pay for the Street Wraith. Next. Alright, so... We're back on the play. All right, on the play. Uh, this hand is definitely dopamine. We'll keep it. This looks very solid. Okay, Cycle Street Wraith. Ready? There is Tarmogoyf. Love it. Uh, we'll cycle another Street Wraith here. And Seal of Fire. This is coming together nicely. I will play this. We might want to consider a swamp here, but I need to shock. Need to shock to turn on Death Shadow. All right, uh, Clothis is very strong, but Relic, I think, hurts worse. So we had, like, the perfect hand, but the opponent also has a very strong hand. I think we take Relic. It just comes down too soon. Uh, Manadork, I'm definitely going to take a look at that in a moment. Let's go.
Make sure we're not completely boned to a blood moon. Another Tarmogoyf. Excellent. This is only instant or sorcery. Play another Goyf. This is Clothis. Make sure that's the same forest that we saw. All right. Um. So Seal of Fire. Target them. Pass turn. They eat the relic out of their yard. Here comes Bloodbraid Elf. Into Utopia Sprawl. Perfect. Perfect. We can kill the Bloodbraid Elf with a bolt and then hopefully uh, swing for lethal. They do get to eat something if they survive next turn, so... I don't think they're beating our hand. All right. So that one looked like it was very play draw dependent. Both of our hands were really good during that last match. Um, but I think being on the play definitely won me the game. Uh, if things were different, I was on the draw that game. I think the opponent maybe uh, has a better shot because they can activate Relic in response uh, to Tarmogoyf attacking. Uh, but instead, we just got it down before it mattered, uh, the Goyf that is. Uh, so, all in all, a pretty good showing for uh, Traverse Death Shadow today. Happy with the results, three and two. Um, don't know if there was really an opportunity for us to um, get a 4-1 or better. Um, we can see the deck still struggles with, uh, with Uro. Uh, still struggles with um, with ad nauseum, but I think we probably have a good ad nauseum matchup. I just don't think I drew uh, very well. Uh, we do have only um, two answers in the deck to a resolved uh, ley line of sanctity, so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, we do have um, a problem dealing with enchantments. So the two matches that we lost were enchantment based. Uh, there might be something to that. Um, maybe the deck does need more. Um, Assassin's Trophy, but giving the opponent land is probably a risky proposition in this format.